Hi, I'm Michael Matthews. I directed uh, two feature films so far. The first one, Five Fingers for Marseille, and the second one, Love and Monsters. Uh, born in Durban and then moved across to Cape Town uh, about 14 years ago. And so what got me into uh, film, you know, it was like a little bit of a discovery. I almost was going to do photography. I wasn't quite sure. I thought, like, I'd always loved films and, and been super passionate about films growing up. Uh, but it always felt like something I don't, didn't think I could probably do. You know, I was like, well, how am I going to... I don't want to get stuck doing, like, really crappy stuff that, like, I don't, you know, actually want to get into it for. Um, so the idea of, like, doing bigger, cool films was just, like, a bit of a dream that I wasn't sure was real. But I got into film school and kind of as I started getting into it and working with other people, I started realizing, you know, just how passionate I was about it and how a lot of that filters into just getting good at something and putting the time into it. So um, I started studying, I thought I'd do cinematography. Then within the first year of, of the three years I did, I studied at City Varsity. Um, I, I realized like as a cinematographer, I couldn't shoot a good film if there wasn't like a good director to shoot it for. So I was like trying to make things good for other people, but it wasn't really working. And then I realized, you know, I kind of need to be in control of what it is to try and make something good. Um, and that's what sort of like pulling me into it. And then, and then I got kind of more confident about it and then started taking it on more seriously. Um, and then the, the earliest learning things I can start taking from that was, like the team you start forming, like the people I started at film school with are still the people I, I, I work with now. They're still like my favorite uh, different people. We started a company as I finished uh, studying to try and make films. We did um, a lot of commercial things and short films, uh, music videos, um, under like a creative collective. So there was myself as editor, cinematographer, sound designer, composer, all extensions of kind of this, this base we started and a writer and sort of producing partner that became like a really big relationship for me. Um, but all of that was, you know, it stemmed from, from just finding those people that you're excited to work with when you're studying. And that was one of the biggest things was just, I think letting yourself get into something and get excited about it and just start doing stuff means you start working with people and then there's some people you won't connect with and other people you, you'll be surprised you end up forming like a really long, big relationship with. And as the career goes further and further, you know, it's like without other people to lean on or to like bounce things off or to help you when you actually want to make stuff, it's really hard. I've seen that a few times. Um, just with people who have kind of gone it a bit too alone, they've ended up getting quite stuck because then they're kind of just in their own bubble and they can't like pick each other up is what we would do a lot. Like you would, there'd be long periods where it was just difficult and things weren't working, but then someone else could go, it's cool, let's go and do this thing. Or like, you know, what we're doing is the right thing. We're, we're good at what we do, we'll figure it out, we'll get there. And so it's hard to do that stuff like when it's just you. Um, so that was one of the biggest things. And then also just making things, you know, like I can't specifically say, probably shouldn't be saying, but I can't say that I learned that much, you know, in the, in the studies. But the making was the most important part. And again, having the people to make stuff with and just going and doing things and then them being pretty crappy, uh, but then there being aspects of them that was cool. And then starting to work out what you're good at or not good at, you know? I, I think it was by the end of my first year or early second year of when I was studying, I realized even though I wanted to direct, the stuff I was writing was not that good. It was like, the ideas I thought were interesting, but as I'd sit and do it, I'd get too lost in it, a bit too much of a perfectionist, and I'd slowly lose it and lose the confidence in what I'm trying to do. And I just realized, like, I don't think I'm good at this. You know, it's not not what I'm... Just because I want to direct and I I've, feel like I've got a vision for something doesn't mean I can fill in that space, which is like a really difficult job in its own. Um, but everyone else I was standing with just sort of wrote and direct and did their own things. Um, so I went looking for writers and I went to the different film schools and I went to UCT, which had like a big writing uh, a class, like of multiple years of many people studying without even necessarily getting the films made. They were just studying writing. And I managed to meet the heads of department and, uh, and then they sent out emails to all the people in that class. And then like who has short stories they've written or who wants to speak to this director about making a film and then i had a handful of of students who were excited and looking for that connection then send me scripts and i suddenly had a whole bunch of different scripts from people um, a lot of them weren't good um, 
but it was interesting to, for the first time to be reading other people's things that just wanted to make something. And that's where I met Sean Drummond, who became like my key partner for the next like 10, 15 years. And, uh, you know, he just had a really cool idea that was like, I haven't thought of something this cool. And it's really well articulated, well written. And then we went and did that short together, even though we were at different schools. And then from there, you know, started trying to work on a feature the next year, which we then spent about two years on. It didn't work out. It was our first big learning curve of the producers were telling us 100% it was going to get made and they had this money and they knew it, blah, blah, blah. And, and we had to work through all of that stuff and kind of learn how to navigate through some of the business stuff as we were kind of trying to get into it. But it was like me and Sean really at the core doing that and it was such a, a big uh, collaboration. Um, uh, and that came from just one day or a couple of days where I suddenly clicked and put that effort in to just go somewhere else and go see could I find a writer somewhere else, you know. Um, and it's like simple things like that of like actively just trying to do things. I think whatever you're drawn to wanting to focus on or excited about if it's visual effects and you just go and you, you start looking and finding people that are really good at that at the same age you're not suddenly going to get this like guy who gets paid tons of money and does ma massive amazing things to to do your vfx so it's really just a learning thing as you're growing through those years uh and the relationships you build um and so you know on the film side so we left we started a company we wanted to do films big long learning curve there of just the business side of it trying to get money trying to make a movie and um you know the, i think the first thing problem with the main thing we we did focused on which was really cool which we're actually really looking at now was that it was just too big too dark and just too much of like a you'll never do that as a first film um and but we kind of you know you, it takes a while to work those things out and, uh, and so we moved away from that and then we started thinking what could we do that like was within our resources to a degree, um, which was the, the West and the Five Fingers for Maasai. Um, and so we did a month long road trip, myself and Sean, and it was, we did it from money from the whole team of us that had been working this company. We all put the money together that we'd been earning, a portion of it to like fund a little trip of development for myself and Sean to go. And we spent a month on the road driving from town to town trying to find a way we could film this like Western uh, and then base a lot of the story around the actual place and not think what would we build and how would we do stuff because we would actually have found this like perfect town in South Africa. So we did about 8,000 kilometers and uh, and just stayed every day in a new place and we found this this town lady gray in the eastern cape and then we we stayed another like two weeks or so and we met the mayor and the community leaders and took photos of all the interesting things and spoke to every local going what cool location oh there's a tunnel there there's a band abandoned train track oh these ravines down here are really cool and then so we took a lot of photography kind of a lot of the local issues and the real things going in the community also like fed into the reality of what filtered into the story and then we went away and Sean wrote that script, um, the first draft of that. And then it took us from that point, we actually had the basics of what we wanted to do, the town, for photos of location, it all looked really cool. The script was in a reasonable place, although it went through many more years. But even from that point of it being this cool project that we, that we had figured out, it took another eight or nine years. And every year we literally thought we were making it. You know, we'd have a certain investors or certain things there and it was brutal that was the hardest time so far in the career just because it's like a couple of years is easy five years six years and you get to seven years and you think okay should i just be should we just be doing a different movie should we just doing a complete different thing should i go overseas and try to find different opportunities but you know like because there was always that like carrot there of like we've all it's really cool and we've almost got the money and it nearly happened it's almost like the ignorance is what pulls you through it because you you think it's going to work out even though if you knew the whole path you might look at it and go i don't know if that's worth it um but uh you know there was a point where we had all the money and legally signed in and then still took two years to make it because as we went into pre-pride and the american partners we had found came to sh to shoot with us and we were on location pre-pride one of the main investors suddenly could the, put and could, uh, couldn't put the money in and it was like we had to pull the plug in the whole thing and the whole thing fell apart and then it was another two years so that was just it, those were hard times because it just didn't i wasn't earning money somewhere else i was doing some commercials to get by that was about it but i, I always want to do films so i was scared to lean too far into that space um, and then and know that I'm getting comfortable earning money over here, but it's not what I wanted to be doing. And that, I think that a lot of people find that part of the challenge. 
Um, so anyway, we finally got there. Money comes in from who knows where in terms of like, you just never know. Things can seem so sure and then not. And then some small seed of a relationship from three years earlier is where something comes out of. And it's, you just don't know, you know. Um, and uh, anyway, we finally managed to make that film and it did well, you know, festival wise and it sold around the world. It didn't make huge amounts of money, but it did very well for a South African film and played at high level festivals. And then that was the big jump for me and, and Sean as well of, uh, of getting great agent representation in the US um, just to open that door. Because I've always wanted to do sort of bigger international stuff. I'm still very committed to the South African um, landscape and wanting if there's a couple of stories we're working on that are still South African. Um, but I've, you know, I've always wanted to do sort of bigger stuff for a world audience or wherever it shoots or however we do it. Um, and so it, that was cool opening those doors up and then that was a whole new world to learn um, of, uh, of, of like the more Hollywood studio landscape and, and starting to get scripts and starting to pitch on things and figure out that. And um, So that next feature I got into was a really big jump, like a Love and Monster. It was like about 50 times the budget of, of Five Fingers kind of thing. And um, uh, it was out of my league. So it was... Uh, at that stage, I was broke. I owed money. Uh, I didn't know. I was sort of digging a hole I shouldn't be digging because I started thinking, like, at what point I'm being irresponsible because I've just made Five Fingers. It did well, but here I am six months later and I actually don't have any money and I don't have a job. And now I'm still in the same position. I don't know what to do. Um, so all of those are like real tricky, real things that I think every filmmaker like has to kind of slowly work through. There's no magical space that opens up that just the whole world opens up um so anyway i was in that phase i had my i'd gotten married six months later i had my first child so i'm six months into the first baby i have and owing my family money which is the only way i could get some money at the time reading scripts pitching on things which you don't earn any money doing and starting to think like is this am i being like really irresponsible by just continuing down this path and then love and monsters came along and it was like a big pitch and I just put a huge, I put about two months of solid work into this pitch and they were all pretty blown away. It was Paramount Pictures and a company called 21 Labs. They were pretty blown away and they brought me across for the main pitch in the room, which is like an hour long pitch in, in at the Paramount offices. Um, and uh, that was probably the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done. Cause again, I felt like now I've got like every, if this, if I lose this, I've now spent months on this and I don't have anything to fall back on and I've got a baby and what am I doing? And I was still pitching against other peep directors, two other directors at this stage. So I did the pitch. There's some really funny stories to go with how that all went and how, how nerve wracking that was. Um, and then they, I was supposed to hear within a day, sat in my hotel without money, not being able to do anything for like five days. Then they said, just head home. We still don't know quite know. And I'm just thinking, well, there, that, there it goes. I'm pretty sure I probably didn't get it. Came back to Cape Town and uh, it still took about three weeks. I only got an answer. So I was starting to move on going, okay, fine. I, I had a big commercial. It was the first job I've had all year that I had to turn away to go and do the pitch. And uh, and and now I lost that and, and now I've kind of got nothing. And then they replied and said, I got it. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's incredible, such good news. But then again, like a week later, it went from being a greenlit project that was happening to the marketing people having meetings and uh, and them deciding there's too mixed genre and we're not sure and it's we're pulling it back and we're not quite sure what the plan is. We need to revisit it. And then cut to like another four or five months of me working on it, not being paid to, to sort of bring it with them all the way into the budget and reworking the script and all these things for them to eventually green light it. And that sounds like a longish ramble, but that's actually still the really like quick version of explaining that whole story. Um, and then it was, we were literally in pre-production. It was shot in Australia. And I was just committed to, to this is, I've got to try and do this, but they still hadn't actually greenlit and said, we're definitely going ahead. They were on the edge. And my wife was packing up our house in Cape Town. She had closed, had to close her stores because we all wanted to come together. And the film still wasn't greenlit. And it's like, so anyway, that was, those are all the kind of stripes that I've earned so far, just moving along of like the, just the true difficulties of what it is getting along. You know, Five Fingers may not have happened and we could have got to nine years, 10 years and certain things just didn't align. And then what we would have done is probably 
beat our heads against the wall like another 80 times and then gone, let's make something with literally what we have, you know, or uh, I think that's the, 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 the biggest learning thing overall from watching other people is like, it's the continuing to do it. It's gonna be really tough. There's like no one I've ever met that's had like an easy path getting there. Um, but it's also one of the earliest pieces of advice I got when I still didn't really know anything. I was in the first year studying and I went to, there was this older film festival called Setengi in, in Cape Town. And then it was like the last year they did it. But I didn't have a proper pass and I snuck into one of these things and there was this old Italian director talking to a huge auditorium that was all applauding everything he was saying. And I didn't know who he was. I still don't even know who he was, but he was probably about 85 years at the end of his career. And I remember him saying from all the people he's seen through his whole life, he's watched super talented people like not make it because they gave up. And he's watched people that were actually pretty average that he just saw over the years got really good at doing it. And so he was like, it's just the people that stick to it. Um, and I guess love it enough to want to do it and keep doing it even if it's not working or it seems very difficult is, is usually how people get there. Um, there's not normally like a magical flash of, of doing something incredible out of nowhere and then you've just sort of blown up, you know, it's very, very, very unlikely. So if you're just sort of finishing film school and just getting into it and trying to figure it out, the advice I would give is, you know, to just make things and just be doing, you know, and whether that means just working on other people's things that look interesting and that you'll be learning from or making connections um, or whether it's you driving something forward, trying to get something made. Uh, without money or with a certain resource but not others I think just making things is important and then you'll slowly sort of like as more of a filmmaker I think you'll slowly decide what's worth doing or not if you can see it and go it could be fun to do that but I definitely need a bit of resources to do that or to do that to really make it good enough um, but initially I would say it's important to just do and not get stuck in bubbles of not doing. I've seen that happen quite a few times. Um, you know, the writing process and the conceptualizing working is super important and, and does take time. You gotta get your head in there and, and there's a huge skill to learn to do stuff on paper on the level it needs to be done before you're actually doing it. Uh, but that said, you can get kind of lost there in, in having a script that you can't get made and not making stuff, you know? Um, when we first started realizing Five Fingers is going to be really hard to make and we we're hitting quite a few walls and it had been about a year and a half since I'd done anything, I went and made a short film called Sweetheart, uh, which opened up a whole lot of different doors, um, which was interesting just because it was the case of I have to make something. So I went did like a black and white science fiction that was very different. Um, and uh, and funny enough, that one of the big learning curves there that's also quite interesting is you know, when we finished that, we made a really good trailer for it and we packaged it well with quite cool little images and posters and things like that. And then without even knowing quite what we were doing, we made quite a nice press kit for it. And, and we put this trailer out and then we had people reach out um, and, and start talking about it and connected us to other bigger platforms. And, um, and, and so it went out to quite a big audience internationally on that. And I had executives from a couple of big studios reaching out saying, this looks really cool, what else are you doing? And we just happened to be in the US trying to find partners on Five Fingers at a sort of, a, I forget what it's called, Department of Trade and Industry sort of mission, a group of people going there to New York. And so I had just enough money to go, oh, well, we'll be in LA in uh, five days. So I'll just come by and meet you, you know? And it's all those little like steps of just putting that energy in and putting stuff out there that really makes a difference. But then went there and sat, went on to Warner Brothers and went into Fox and sat with these executives. And this is like probably three, two, three years out of film school. And so I don't know, for me, that's like 13 years ago, 12 years ago, I can't remember. Um, so I hadn't really actually done much, but just that opening the door and then taking those chances and leaning in, nothing else came of it except the fact that I realized those doors are open. And that was a huge realization. The fact that I did this thing in South Africa, it wasn't a big anything. It was a cool short film, but somehow we did something cool enough that clicked onto an international, uh, really cool site um, uh, that, that these people were following to look for young international talent and then emailed and then there I was having meetings. And I just thought, okay, well, if I make something good, people want it, people are excited about it, you know? So it's not, 
the world's doors aren't closed to exciting talent, but you've actually, you've got to do it. You've got to do stuff, you've got to have things. You can't have the paper and not have done anything and be trying to knock on those doors. It's, there's just too many people there trying to do the same. And um, so anyway, that, that was an interesting one. And then another little gem out of that one was when you're making a short, like having good stills, having cool, really making a good trailer, and and uh, pre like notes for press like little uh, production document things interesting notes from productions as well as your onset stills being of a high level those little packages there's now lots of short form platforms internationally and things and you can line up with pretty cool ones before you release your short online and be like we've got all this cool material we've done like a lot of work for you to look cool and make like a nice splash page of this short film and this poster and they potentially have, you know, a million people looking at that website. And, and those things make big differences to just uh, just getting eyes on what you're doing and making you seem more relevant and opening other doors. So it's, all that stuff's very worth it, you know. Um, when you just put something out online and you don't have a following and there's nothing there, there's nothing for people. You, it's hard to get traction, you know. Um, so, you know, and then the other advice of just getting, uh, if you're just getting in there is, is what I said earlier, is just finding team and working with people um, and being there for other people as well. Um, and, uh, and trying to do things that are different is, is like the easiest and hardest thing to talk about, but it really is a case of, of, of finding what you're excited about in film and what you love about it and figuring out how you're gonna do that in a different way or take it further or have your own perspective on it. You know, if you, if you don't cut through the noise in some sort of ways, it doesn't, it's very hard to get noticed. And so you, there's no easy answer for what that is, whether it's like a bold over the top craziness or whether it's just such a strong emotional human drive that's personal to you or a topic socially that's very, linked to you that only you could tell that story there's all different ways it could that it goes but you've got to you've got to be honest with yourself if about what you're doing if it's really doing something that's that's exciting and that if you someone else did it in italy you would be like i'd love that's such a cool film you know um and and it's tricky to do but i think you've got to be quite hard on yourself with that so thanks for listening to me ramble on about some stories that are hopefully interesting and and uh, provide some insight or and hopefully are inspiring um you know my opinion and like what the journey i've been is is my own and so everyone will have very different ways in which they they find themselves into that world of filmmaking and and uh what gets them through and uh that was my story so far so thanks for listening and uh see you soon